Hey, hey guys, welcome to the vlog. I'm going to answer some questions that were put to me. So first one, I've been absorbing and practicing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, just getting into PHP over the last month as much as possible to where I feel I'm competent enough now to make a website from start to finish. I've decided to jump in and go around to local businesses to see if I can talk to them about creating a website. I just got married and have no FU money yet. So that's why I'm really pushing myself as hard as I can. You need to get your FU money. Very important. If you don't know what FU money is, um, maybe I'll link to it in this video, but you can just search my, um, my collection. You, you watch the FU. The FU money video is probably one of the most important videos that you ever see in your life. You'll remember it for your entire life, especially if you follow the instructions in the FU money video. You'll thank me a year from now, 10 years from now, 25 years from now, you'll thank me. Anyway, uh, so here's the question. Basically, my question is, how should I dress when I go in to speak with these businesses? Should I have a full suit or should I go super casual with a hoodie? Never go into a business meeting looking like you're still in college. Do not wear a hoodie. Zuckerberg could get away with wearing a hoodie because he's the head of the business. When you're head of the business, you can walk around in t-shirts and shorts and old jeans. Anyway, you get the idea. But when you're going in to meet a potential client, you have to dress, uh, not overly do it. You don't want to be in a suit and tie. People don't trust people in the coding world if you're wearing a suit and tie. It doesn't make any sense. But you should dress casual but you know professional so you might wear uh, clean jeans clean shoes and wear a dress shirt no tie that kind of thing you don't semi-professional if you will also judge the type of business that you're going into are you going to see accounting firm a legal firm that's one thing if you're going to see a, uh, a barber or a hairdressing salon you could be a bit more casual. You get the idea. So no, don't don't go in there looking like you're still in college. They're not going to have faith in you. You got to remember, when businesses are hiring professionals, web designers, web programmers, social media marketing professionals, whatever, they are basically putting their trust in you that you're going to deliver professional work. So you have to look a little professional. Uh, thanks again, I especially, uh, especially for your YouTube videos. Thanks again, and especially for your YouTube videos. Your beginner's HTML and CSS playlists were very helpful. And my studio web version of these courses are 1,000 times more helpful. Next question. Why is it you almost never talk about Golang among your list of programming languages? Is there a reason for this? There's no particular reason. I just don't like to talk about things I haven't used. I've given you my assessment where I see Golang as a specialized language and it has a specialized use case. So what I try to do is teach general purpose programming. I stick to the major languages because most people are going to be using the major languages most of the time. So that doesn't mean Golang is no good. It's probably very good in certain circumstances, but you have to understand you have to evaluate technology from both the point of view of a coder and the business owner. If you code a project in some niche, cryptic, not widely used language, that is a liability for the business. Because let's say you write a great app that performs 20% better or 10% better because you used Golang versus something else, some more common language. And all of a sudden, you have to update it a year from now, two years from now, and likeliness that Golang is not going to get the traction that you see with C Sharp and uh, Python, etc. And the business owner is now is now in a tight spot because they don't they're going to have a hard time finding Golang programmers to begin with. It's hard enough to find good programmers at all, but now you got to find a Golang programmer, somebody who specialized in that language, which is a specialized language. All of a sudden, they are much more vulnerable as business owners because the code base 
becomes that much more difficult to maintain because it's just hard to find these people. Now, the instinct of some noob developers is, that, is to say, well, yeah, that makes me much more valuable as a Golang program, programmer, right? Yes, it does in a sense, but what you might find yourself is in a situation of flash programmers where uh, eventually you won't have any work or hardly any work because flash goes away. On the flip side, you look at JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, Python, PHP, SQL. These languages are so important and so popular that you're always going to find work in those languages. So for in a technical from a technical point of view, I have no problem with Golang. I don't know enough about it to say yes or no to it. I'm sure it has its use cases. But when I look at languages and technology, as you should do, you should look at the market implications and look at it from the point of view of the code base owner. Uh, would you want to have your application written some rare technology or not widely used technology, whether it be a programming language or some rare, unus unusually uh, unusual framework? And then, you know, a year, two, three down the line, four years down the line, all of a sudden, it's super hard to find these programmers. Then you got to pay through the nose to, uh, you got to pay a high premium to get anything done. That's why a lot of business owners will, uh, will be reluctant to use uh, niche languages. I know, because when I was in my 20s, it's about 800 years ago, I was fascinated by certain niche technologies, whether it be programming languages, frameworks, 3D animation software, etc. I would I would had a tendency to look for the the unusual pieces, you know, looking for some technological advantage. I stopped doing that because it, it ran me into some trouble. I ran into some trouble. <laughs> there we go. Later on, with some projects I had been involved with, where I'd used some unusual tech that had some advantage in one area but it came with a whole bunch of disadvantages as a result of the fact that it was so unusual so keep that in mind